What's up, guys? Fubsy here, Julian, uh, with another daily. Daily number nine, nueve. We're one closer to our daily number ten. And I'm really excited for daily number ten. I've already gotten, like, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 questions. I'd love more. Keep sending the questions. So let's talk about what's going to happen. Oh, I forgot my watch. Oh, uh, that's okay. I took it off. Um, okay, so, got my notes here. Daily number nine, we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to analyze a match from the Star City Open from this past weekend, a match that I really enjoyed watching. I really, really liked it. Before we do that, I want to say thank you again to those of you who are new to the channel, who are subscribed, who are watching these videos for the first time. Um, welcome, and uh, thank you so much. And please tell all your friends and let everybody know as well about the channel because we're trying to make this a community, like I said in the other video. We're trying to make, grow and make this even bigger and make this even better for everybody. Um, so now for the next daily, which I'll probably end up recording on Sunday, um, I'm not going to record again over the weekend. So on the Sunday, um, I'm going to record a daily and we're going to do a Q&A, like I said in the, uh, the preview video, or the, the contest video. And in this Q&A, I want you guys to email questions to fubzygamer at, I mean, not fubzygamer, that's my other email, you can email there too, but uh, fubzyquestions at gmail.com, that was my phone, sorry, fubzyquestions at gmail.com. Um, that's where you can email your questions and your comments. For example, you can email rules questions. You can play like stump the stump the judge. I mean, I'm not. I mean, I'm I'm, a, I'm not a level one judge because I just haven't taken the test, haven't bothered doing all of that. But I feel like my rules knowledge is pretty dang good. Um, and yeah, I can answer those questions. You can send in pictures of your deck lists or something like that. We could talk about that. Anything else? Uh, just things like that. Here now, here's the only kind of questions I'm not going to answer. Okay, I'll just tell you straight up. I'm not going to be able to answer questions about what I think things are going to look like post rotation in standard. Whether it's a deck that you want to know how the how is the deck going to play once standard rotates, or is this card going to be good, or are you still going to play Delver? I have I have no idea. Like I've said before, nobody has any idea. People who are speculating sh just shouldn't speculate. They, they just don't know because you don't know what's in Return to Ravnica. Like I said in another video, a year ago, nobody was brewing a Primeval Titan because everyone was saying, well, Valakut's rotating, so Primeval Titan's going to be garbage. But they made Kessig Wolf run, right? And so not as good as Valakut, but still a really solid card. And that just applies everywhere, you know? I mean, the Delver Secrets didn't exist a year ago. Neither did Snapcaster Mage, Geist of St. Chaps, Guru Geist, right? Look where we've been since then. So the same thing is going to happen with Return to Ravnica and with Guild Pact, right? Or uh, whatever, whatever it's called, right? We don't know yet what the uh, what the set's going to look like. I don't know what the set's going to look like when when the format rotates. So I, I just can't speculate on that. I I just don't know, and I'm really sorry, guys. I wish I had a better answer for you, but I just don't. So I won't be able to answer those questions. But everything else, I'll definitely answer, and we'll definitely talk about it all night long. Um, and yeah, okay. So let's move on. I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, another cool thing. Drinking more green tea. Um, I'm trying to not drink soda. Um, because as much as all of you love these big old chops here, I, uh, I'd like to see them gone. And uh, so I'm drinking more green tea. <sighs> drinking more water. Just trying to be more healthy in general. Um, anyway, let's get on to this game. What do you guys say? Okay. So here, this game is between Joseph Smith playing Dungrove. Mono green Dungrove on the left. And Benjamin Lundquist playing Blue White Delver on the right. So you know what? Let's just do this. Let's open up. What am I opening up? Oh, Star City. And let's look at these deck lists. Because we want to analyze the decks and talk about what we're doing here. So we have Joseph Smith and Ben Lundquist. So here's Ben Lundquist. Look at his second. So let's look at this Dunger Bell. By the way, did you see? Okay, until, until I had clicked on there. Until I clicked on that, did you see? Oh, the Frights deck was interesting, right? But I clicked on, like, the Delver, Delver, Delver. I clicked on Frights. I just clicked on Dungrove. But then I clicked on Delver, Delver, Delver. And I didn't go this far. I just I just stopped. I think it's kind of funny. Uh, I just look at those sneaky Delver decks the whole time. Okay, so here we have Joseph Smith's Dungrove deck. So main deck, two Batter Skull, four Birds of Paradise, four Dungrove Elder, two. Anyway, you, you can see the deck list here. Um, and this sideboard as well. Now... We're going to see it in the game, but there's a couple cards I want to talk about here. Um, I don't know the deck very well, so I don't know what he's sideboarding in and out as well as I should probably. If he saw Geist of St. Traff and things like that, he probably took out his Uvenwald trackers. I don't know how good those are against Delver. Probably they're not that great. They're, oh, maybe. Maybe they're integral to the deck. He almost definitely took out Predator Ooze. I would take out Predator Ooze because I think just dies the Vapor Snag. It's just awful against Vapor Snag. Um, and against a uh, Dismember, which you know Ben Lunkos probably has. Batter Skulls, phew, maybe stayed in. Yeah, they're good. Probably they stayed in. 
Um, Dismembers, Beast Within, Green Sun Revenge, those all probably stayed in. And he might have brought in the Ratchet Bombs, not sure about that. Um, Torpor Orb, I don't really like this card. Uh, he, I hope he didn't bring it in. If he did, that's not very smart. Uh, Beast Within, maybe Crushing Vines, he definitely brought in the Crushing Vines. Um, he absolutely brought in Crushing Vines, it's a really good card. Um, yeah, he kills angels, it kills every. it kills everything. Surgical, ooh, this card is bad, this card is bad, don't play this card. I guarantee you, he got to the top eight, and it's awesome that he got to the top eight, I've never been to the top eight, right? But he got there because of Dungrove Elder, where's that, Dungrove Elder, Strangrove Geist, and Thrag Tusk. That's why he got to the top eight, right? <laughs> I mean, the rest of it, moot. Maybe maybe some Revenge of the Hunted as well. I haven't actually played against that card, so it's probably really good. It probably just dies to Vapor Snag, maybe he took us out too, I don't know. But he really got to that top eight because of Dungrove Elder and Strangle Guys. Those cards are just amazing. And and if I were him, I would have maybe cut. I don't know. I don't know what I would do with his deck. I don't like Predator Ooze, but that's just me. I don't really like Mono Green, right? I think he's playing the wrong color. But that's fine. That's great. I mean, he's in the top eight, which is awesome. Better than I've ever done. Um, and his deck is pretty interesting. The, the one thing that I see that's really kind of weird to me is only two Llanowar Elves. Um, so he's got four birds, two elves. I think it's critical for his deck to hit a, tur a turn two Dungrove Elder. I think that is like. Of, I think it's really important. Not because it's a beater, right? But just because he can play that card on two so that he has a better chance of hitting Revenge of Hunted on that card. Because it's hexproof, right? Yeah, so only only opponents can't target it. You can target it just fine. Side note, funny story. The first time I played against... Maybe not the first. One of the first times I played against Dungrove Elder, I was playing... some blue deck. I don't remember what I was playing. Uh, maybe it was... Cobblade... Post-Rotation Cobblade, maybe? I can't remember. Anyway, um, or post, post banning's Cobblade. So they played Dungrove Elder, and I'm like, oh, and I just thought he was just like Thrun for some reason. I thought he was just as good as Thrun, or just the same as Thrun. So I, the next turn, I cast a Phantasmal Image targeting Dungrove Elder. Yeah, I didn't have any forests in play. I was like, Image, Dungrove Elder. And my opponent was like, yeah, that's fine. And I'm like, yeah, uh, oh, dang it. Bang, and I just bend it. That was pretty embarrassing. Don't cost me to cast Phantasmal Image targeting the Dungrove Elder. That doesn't do anything to anything at all. Anyway, sorry guys, I got the rain. Oh, it's got a little red eye here. These allergies from this rabbit are just kicking my ass, man. Okay, so... Yeah, so there's his deck. It's it's cool. It's interesting. Every now and then, this, these kind of decks work. They kind of sneak into these top eights. Kind of like that Frights deck, where they just kind of go, whoops, whoop, and, and I'm in, you know, because they just people weren't ready for it. I bet there were turns when he went turn two Elder, turn three Batter Skull. Can you turn three? Turn four Batter Skull, I guess. Um, and then just crush with it. I mean, that, that seems really good, right? Okay, so let's look back. Let's look at Ben Lundquist's deck. Now, of course, there's some spoilers because Ben's in third, Joe Smith's in seventh, so Ben won. But um, that's okay. So this game is really interesting, so I like to look at it. So here's Ben's deck. So Ben, as you can see, did not go for the big thing that was going on at the time. Let me just show you. Oh, it's going so slow. Okay, let's just stop. So the big thing happening right now was the Charles Gindy and the Josh Cho. They were playing um, Hero Bladehold in the main deck instead of Restoration Angel. And Ben Lundquist didn't go for that. He went for the Augur of Bolas plan instead because Restoration Angel and Augur of Bolas is awesome. It's really, really good. Overall, I still don't know how I feel about Augur of Bolas, which probably means he's not very good because if I still don't like him very much, then I probably just shouldn't be playing him. Um... Because, like, Restoration Angel, I just love. Guy Saint Trap, love. Talrand, love. Augur, mm, iffy. He's he's very specific. But he could be good. He could definitely be good. Um, let's go ahead and just pause this for a second. Okay, I just had to blow my nose. My nose is all probably red and stuff. Okay, so anyway, Augur Bolas. I'm not saying this is a mistake at all by Ben Lunkus. I'm just not sure how I feel about it. Um, I gotta keep playing with it and decide still. Um, Restoration Angels, Rune Chandra's Pike, the three gut shot for Mana Leak, which is interesting because I'm only playing three right now. I thought about copying his deck. The only thing that worries me a little bit is two Geist of St. Traft. Like, I love Geist of St. Traft, so I wish he'd have four, but at the same time, you know, he knew what he was doing there. Um, he's playing the eight islands, four glacial, four secret, room, two more than hot. So that's 18 lands, um, which is fine. He's got the forge ataxium probe, four thought scour, four ponder. That's, that's 12 cantrips. So it's fine that he's playing only 18 land. Um, what's the saying? Like for every three cantrips, it's like you're playing a land. Or for every two. Every four, I mean, I can't remember. So is that playing? It's like he's playing twenty-one, twenty-two land. This is good. This is kind of the, the traditional Delver deck right now. Sometimes nineteen lands, but usually just this. 
Okay, let's look at the sideboard. So he's Blade Splicer, Image, Oblivion Ring, Slush for Purge, Dismember, Dissipate, Mental Misstep, Steel Sabotage, Tauran, Timely. I love these boards. I love Delver boards. Like, they're just so cool. There's so much stuff going on here. Okay, what did he bring in? So he definitely brought in Blade Splicer. And he probably cut the Geist isn't trapped. Geist just isn't that great against these mono green decks because all their creatures can block it. Every creature that, that Joseph Smith has can block Geist isn't trapped really well and really profitably. So most likely he took these out and put in the Blade Splicers. Phantasmal Image, most likely he didn't bring in. Maybe. I mean, he could bring it in. There's no, re there's not like a reason to bring it in, but it's not the worst. Purge, he didn't bring in. Oblivion Ring, he didn't bring in. Dismember, he might have brought in. Probably he did. Mental Missteps, definitely he brought in. He wants to stop the birds, stop the Rancors, stop the uh, Trackers. He definitely brought in Mental Missteps. Taurand is iffy. I like Taurand a lot against the green decks, especially against Naya decks and things like that. The, the Mono Green, yeah, I'd probably bring in Taurand. And Timely, um... I like Timely a lot. I, um, I, I'm iffy about Timely in general. We're going to see why in this game. But I would have bring Timely in against him. Take out, I would take out the Geists. Maybe you take out the Augers. Because uh, they don't block. Well, they block pretty well. Probably keep the Augers. I would probably cut two Mana Leaks. And maybe like a Vapor Snag. Mm, yeah, something like that. Um, I'm going to have a whole daily on sideboarding, by the way. Because I need to get better at it too. So my analysis could be very wrong. And I'm very willing to admit that I could be... Dead wrong about my analysis of this game. But, uh, but yeah, so that, that's kind of how I feel like he probably sideboarded there. Anyways, let's go back to the game and let's watch this thing happen. Um, oh, if you're interested in finding this game, you can go to, sorry guys, you can go to twitch.tv, twitch.tv slash scg live if you want to watch this, right? And then this is until they, once they post the videos like on their podcast and stuff, then it's, then it's a lot different. And go to videos. And you click on this one, the one that has Jerry T and Mike Flores there. This is the uh, top eight. These, I mean, these are the yeah, the top eight video here. And this one is where they play the rest of the top eight, the top, you know, the, the, the semis and the finals. But here's where they put the quarterfinals, and this is where this match is. So we're here, and we're an hour, one hour, thirteen minutes, and fifty seconds here. The game we just watched Josh Cho win, um, and now we are skipping over for game three of Joe Smith versus Benjamin Lundquist. Um, so let's talk about the game. Let's figure out what's going on. So Ben Lundquist, turn one Delver. Sweet. Like the best ever. Uh, Joe Smith plays a turn one land. That that kind of worries. That would worry me a little bit as Joe Smith. I, ooh, man, sketchy. Because, it, you know, without a mana ramp, without like an accelerant of some sort, I mean, you just want to keep those hands. Even if you know they have gut shot, you just want to keep them. Um, anyway, so Ben Lundquist then untaps, doesn't flip his Delver, um, and so now what he's doing is his hand has a couple of draw spells. I've seen this game a couple times, so I know what's in it, right? And so um, what he's debating right now is, you know, probably do I want to cast his Thought Scour now or at the end of my turn? But he casts it now. So he Thought Scours, and uh, he I can't see the second card underneath that Glacial Fortress, but uh, whatever it is. Anyway, he, so he mills two cards, then he drew, maybe he only milled one. Oh, that's weird. Huh. I didn't even know it's that before. Maybe he only milled one card. Anyway, that doesn't matter. So he Thought Scours, um, just to draw cards. Maybe he drew that Seacrow. Maybe not. But, like, see, as Delver players, you notice how he Thought Scoured looking for land. Um, or, or, or Thought Scoured before he played his land. So that his opponent doesn't know. Is he mana screwed? Is he totally not mana screwed? Like, you know, did he Thought Scour to hit that land? Or did he hit that Ponder that he just cast? What's going on? So Ben Lundquist says, okay, just played my Delver. Um, I mean, I mean, I just played my Thought Scour and my Ponder. My Delver's flipping next turn. Go. And at the end of his turn, Joseph Smith casts Surgical Extraction. This card, man. I don't know how I feel about this card. Um, it's really tough. to to. It's just not a very good card, I don't think. I think what a lot of people don't understand is that against Delver, you want to be playing more Dismembers and less Surgical Extractions. Let's take a break. For, not a break, but let's pause real quick and let's get this hand. So I'm writing down this hand right now. So we have a Glacial Gut Shot. Timely. See, so yeah, so you're writing all this down. Rune Chanter's Pike and a Vapor Snag. So you write, you always write down their hand so that you can track what's going on, right? Now this kind of bugs me about the coverage. So I'm watching Ben's deck, right? I'm like, oh man, what, what do I see here? There's the Dismember, there's the Gut Shots. I saw Image, I saw Blade Splicer. Oh man, keep showing me what's in there. There's another misstep. Oh no, don't show me the hand now. I already saw the hand. Now show me the deck he's going through. But whatever, that's fine. Um... So you see Surgical right here, all that Joe Smith did really was he paid two life and he discarded a card to shuffle Ben's library, really. I mean, I guess he cut down a Rune Chatter's Pike a little bit by taking out those pond the, the Ponder, 
but it just didn't do... Oh, I see. Okay, by the way, time out. Here's the second card that, that Thought Scar milled. I remember I couldn't see it. It's right there. Um, anyway, it just didn't do much. It didn't affect the board at all, right? It didn't actually kill... Like, Dismember there would have probably been better. Maybe not Dismember the Delver. Maybe, though. Okay, I'm going to pause. Pause, pause, pause. Okay. So here... Um, uh, so Joe Smith just played in a land and passed, right? Um, and, and Ben Lundquist doesn't know if his Delver's going to flip or not because he, the, he shuffled from the, from the Surgical Extraction. So let's talk about Surgical a little bit. So Surgical, like the note I have here, I wrote down, I said the Surgical, yeah, so it just doesn't affect the Battlefield. It doesn't actually do anything to what's happening right now. Like if you're losing, you're still losing, right? It just, I just don't like Surgical very much. I much prefer... Like I said before, dismember. Dismember affects the battlefield. It affects the board. If Joe Smith would have had dismember instead of surgicals here, he would have won probably this game. He definitely could have won this game. Uh, so anyway, so he plays his second land and he passes again. If I were Ben Lundquist, I would be very concerned right now. Uh, well, no, well, no, no, not concerned. I would be wary. I'd be watchful because he was tapped out. So Joe Smith could have done whatever he wanted. He could have cast two birds or two elves. He could have cast a tracker and an elf. He could have, I don't know, done something. You know, he could have done something. Strangle root geist, green sun for a bird. A lot of things he could have done right there with his opponent being tapped out. But he didn't do anything. This tells Ben Lundquist that Joe Smith kept a slow hand. And so he's got to start watching out for the fatties a little bit. Now, it's not indicative of too much right now because there's no Dungrove Elder yet being played. So Ben Lundquist plays his third land, doesn't flip his Delver. Um, and he swings in. So he does it differently. He plays his land, then swings. I prefer to swing before land, but whatever. You know, do whatever you want, I guess. And he plays the Rune Tender Spike. So here, here's what's happened. Okay, so let's pause again. So let's cross off cards. So we cross off the Glacial Fortress, and we cross off the Rune Tender Spike. So his opponent knows that he still has Gut Shot, Timely Reinforcements, and Vapor Snag. So he's playing around those cards a little bit. Uh, his own Grove Elder, you know, maybe, you know, he and his opponent, by the way, tapped out again. You see that? He tapped out again. He still can't cast the Mana Leak. This would be like a perfect time to slam a, to slam a Dung Grove Elder. Um, and so, and he played this Rune Tender Spike because, you know, that he didn't have a Mana Leak in his hand, and his opponent knew that. He only had one draw step to get it. And, and there's just, no, his opponent's not going to really play around Mana Leak. Not very, maybe he will. Um, but if I was sitting in Ben Lundquist's shoes, I would think, okay, he's not going to be playing around my mana leak, even if I hold up the mana for it. He's just going to start slamming things. Because he didn't play anything on turn one, didn't play anything on turn two. He's got to have a grip full of fatties, right? So he's just going to start slamming. He's going to slam this Don't Grow Butter. Next turn, slam another one. The next turn, a Thrag Task. He's just going to start doing things every turn. So I might as well try to race him at this point. Because your game plan here with this deck is to control it as much as you can. But then really what you want to do is you just want to um, race it. And the deck, and the deck can do it with Rune Tender Spike. You can race these kind of decks. So let's see what his opponent does. So Joe Smith. By the way, I'm gonna pause again. Sorry guys. Joseph Smith. It's it's kind of funny that that's his name because for those of you who don't know, I'm a Mormon turned atheist, and uh, Joseph Smith, the name of the founder of my religion, my old religion, and I, it's just kind of funny that that's his name. Not a big deal, but whatever. Okay. So I'm Ben Lundquist. I'm like, all right, here comes a dung grove. Here comes some fatty, and Joe Smith passes again. He's gonna, in just a second here. There's a Crushing Vines. You see that up there? Anyway, his opponent does not. Crushing Vines, Drag Tiles, another Forest. So his opponent untaps, checks the Delver, and flips a Mana Leak. Remember we talked about, about, about um, waiting and about, about priority? So ben, so Joseph Smith can't stop this flip from happening, right? It's gonna flip. But there's still upkeep. So he, his opponent hasn't drawn this Mana Leak yet, right? So during his upkeep, after it flips, because it's flipped, right? They're just not showing it in the sleeve, but the thing has flipped. He's crushing by he's killing this Delver Secrets, tapping out using his turn. The big, the, the scary thing this does, if you're Joe here, is this allows Ben to kind of play whatever he wants. Um, if he has like a Geist of St. Traft, which I don't know that he kept, but if he did, this would be a great time to play it. Or a Blade Splicer, or you know, play another land, an Angel at the end of your turn, something. Anyway, so right now Ben Lundquist, is, I bet his, his big debate right now, if you look at his hand, pause. Okay. This card, okay, so he has his Gut Shot, he has his Timely, or Timely, and he has his, what's his, and he has his Vapor Snag. And his other card here is a Restoration Angel. And so what he's thinking, what he's, I bet what he's thinking in his head is, why don't I have one more mana to flicker this thing? But he's also probably thinking, whew, at least he didn't kill the Restoration Angel. And the last thing is, um, he's probably debating using this Snag to snag his Delver. And he didn't. And he didn't do it. And I love that he didn't do that. Because he ends up winning the game with it later, which is wild. Um... 
But he does. And, and maybe, no, he needed it. He needed to save it. So this is what I'm talking about, about how if it doesn't kill you, then it's kind of okay. So, so killing this Delver is not the end of the world for Ben Lundquist, because he has a good hand. Right? He, I mean, hopefully, he's hoping his opponent will play a, you know, play a dude. Then he can play his timely reinforcements and equip one. Or he can play his angel the end of turn or something like that, right? So it's not the end of the world that this Delver's dying. And, and his opponent used a lot of mana, and he hasn't done anything because he kept this card in his hand. So because he kept the Crushing Vines, and probably other slow cards, he hasn't done anything with his hand. So Ben Lundquist just lets it resolve. He doesn't end up vapor snagging his own Delver. Which I would have done, by the way. If I was sitting in his shoes, I would have vapor snagged it. Probably the wrong play. It definitely was the wrong play there. To, to Vapor Snag would have been wrong, is what I'm saying. So Ben was right. I would have been wrong there, but I would have done it. Um, ben Lundquist, of course, draws his mana league, doesn't have anything, passes the turn. Now, Joseph, so we're going to write this down. So now Joseph Smith knows that he has a mana leak. Now he's got to play around mana leak, which kind of sucks. Because just land go, land go is not very good for him, but whatever. So he just plays his fourth forest and passes the turn, right? Ben Lundquist untaps... And what does he draw? Oh, tap land. Passes right back. Now they're playing a big land go game. Here, if I was Joseph Smith, depending on what his hand is, I can't. I know he has a drag tusk. He's got a green sun, a rancor, and he's got the dungrel elder as well. You're gonna see in a second. Um, or maybe not. Anyway, I probably would start to just slam things because he only has one mana leak, right? I would just start bang, bang, bang every turn and not let him just keep his mana like this. Anyway, he doesn't, and that's fine, you know, but he's got his Dung Grove here. Not going to get mana leaked, but I think he just played things too slowly. If you're Joseph Smith, I think you just got to make your opponent have the mana leak, which he does, but he didn't see a Snapcaster Mage, right? And so he's not going to have two. Maybe he drew another one. Probably not. So I would just start slamming these cards. I would have signed the, the Green Sun last turn for four, if there's something good for four. No, I guess there's not. Or for, you know, to get a Dung Grove. Next turn, maybe the Dung Grove again. Then the next turn, a Thrag Tusk. I would just start going. He's playing too soft around mana leak, I think. Um... So then Ben Lundquist slams the Angel at the end of the turn, untaps, equips the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, casts Thought Scour, milling two more cards into the graveyard. So that's three now. He's got Thought Scour, he's got Jataxian Probe, and then the other Thought Scour. Um, plays his third land, more than Haunt, and he just equips up his Angel and swings. That's what I would do. Taking his opponent to ten. I mean, if you haven't, you know, he's got still, so he drew a Thought Scour to cast, right? So he still has Mana Leak, Vapor Snag, Timely, and Gut Shot. That's a good hand. That's four right there. I mean, he could kill his opponent if he can cast all those spells the next turn or two. So his opponent untaps. His Dungar Butter's at six right now. And it's about to get really good. This game's about... Oh, by the way, so here's what I want to talk about. Uh, that timely reinforcement is in Ben's hand. This is why I don't like timely reinforcements. If that was a Blade Splicer or something similar, you just you could, you could have played it a while ago. When he only had three mana, he could have just played it. But he's been stuck this whole time, having more life than his opponent... And having a, more creatures than his opponent, or the same number of creatures. So Timely's just dead. The whole game, Timely's just dead. Now, I guess it turns out that he ends up using it to win, but it's beside the point. I don't like Timely because these kind of situations can happen to you. Now here, Ben Lundquist is like, man, I wish I could Vapor Snag right now. But you can't, you know, um, as sweet as it would be to, like, you know, miss at that. You can't really mana, like, Rancor because his opponent's not really going to do anything. Cool. Oh, where are they? Okay, sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, Joe Smith, if he would have cast a Green Sun two turns ago, then right now he could play that Rancor. His opponent does the same thing, and then he could slam the Thrag Tusk right now. Right? Do you see what I mean there? Like, he'd be fine. He'd be a 15, he'd be golden. But because he's just playing so softly around that Mana League, so scared of Mana League, he doesn't, and ends up losing in the game. Sometimes you just gotta you just gotta do it over and over and slam 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 until they don't have mana leak anymore and then beat them like that. His hand right now is Green Sun's Unit, Thrag Tusk, and Surgical Extraction. Um, there's just no way he has to time, he he had to play that Green Sun last turn or two turns ago, and then play the Dung Grove and then play the Thrag Tusk or something like that or play Thrag Tusk last turn and then Green Sun for another one or something. You know what I'm saying though, right? Like. He just needed to do more with his mana. He's just wasting his mana. Whereas the Delver player is not wasting his mana. He's holding up for mana leaks. He's holding up for Restoration Angels. He's preparing to react. Um, whereas, opponent, whereas Joseph Smith is just not doing anything. So Ben Lundquist takes the damage. Takes nine. Three is a seven. That's a seven forests plus Rancor. Goes to 11. Untaps. And draws his card. So now right here, this is a really interesting play. I really I really like what happens here. Ben Lundquist does things that I would have done. He, I saw half of what he's going to do, right? But I didn't see the other part of what he's going to do. 
So he's looking, he's calculating, he's going, man, if he has another forest, if he has anything, I'm pretty toast right now, right? If he could, you know, he could green sun for like a strangled geist, there's a lot of bad things that can happen. And he doesn't have a blocker. Again, timely, not not doing it right now. Not working for him the way it should. If it was a blade splicer, cast it, you're fine. Anyway. So he's thinking, he's thinking so hard, he's in the tank a little bit. So here so what he's thinking right now is how can I kill this guy? My my, my angel's at six. How can I get four more out of this? So he's So here's what he does first. Wait for it, wait for it. I'm gonna get ready to pause it as soon as you see. I'm so excited, I'm so nervous. So I'm gonna tell you what he does and what everyone thought that he did. He's just thinking, he's in the tank, he's counting his mana. Sorry, this is just exciting. This is, like, really exciting right here. I was like, okay, like, at this point, I was like, oh, my God, what's going to happen? I'm so nervous. And I'm looking at his hand, and I'm, I am I took my notes, and I'm writing things down, and I'm like, okay, what could he do? He could do this. Like, I saw that he could snag, and then, like, mana like his own snag, targeting his angel. That would take it to eight, so he's, you know, he could swing for eight. He could gut shot his opponent. That would take him to nine. Like, man, what's going to happen right now? But his opponent does the work for him. So you see his hand? So you see his hand? So he has two lands, and then the snag, timely, mana leak, gut shot, right? So here's what happens. So he casts... Whoa, he's still counting. He's still counting. Come on, I'm so excited. Sorry, guys. I'm just so excited. I want to talk about this, but I want to pause it. So I want you to think. He's got the snag. He's got the gut shot, mana leak, timely. And then he finally figures it out. He's like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Because his goal here is to survive. So he casts gut shot. Okay? Gut shot. I pause it. Gut shot. Targeting who? So I was like, oh yeah, so he gut shots Joe Smith for one. Takes him to nine, right? That's what I would, that's what everybody would have done. That's what the announcers thought that he did, right? Take him both to nine. But he didn't. He didn't. Because his plan was to use the timely to just gain life. So instead, he gut shot himself. Taking him to eight. That way they're both not at nine and tied for life. Now, the announcers are going to get all confused here. They're going to get super befuddled as to what's going on. And here, his opponent does something I just don't agree with. I just His opponent just didn't think this through. Maybe he was thinking he had, like, two gut shots or something. But anyway, so right here. So, it was a, so he casts a timely. And his opponent, in response, casts Surgical Extraction. So he's taking himself to eight as well. So that way, they're both at eight. Timely does nothing. Again, you see why I don't like timely. He takes out the two gut shots, right? So he's basically, as far as his life goes, it's the same thing. He's trading two life for two points of damage on the Rune Chanter Spike. But in return, he's not doing anything else. And he's just, I mean, it, it turns out to be okay because he stops this timely. It's kind of funny. It's like a like a not the best card being countered by an even worse card. Like, it's just, I don't know. It's just kind of funny. Um, so in the end, Ben Lundquist... His timely resolves. But there's another gut shot in the yard, right? So his angel was at 7. So then it goes to 5, and now it's back up to 6. So now, once timely... Because timely is going to resolve or it's not. I mean, you know, it's not going to... It is going to resolve, but it's not going to do anything. But his that means his angel will have a 3 still. He'll have two, 2 Thought Scours and uh, the timely in there. So it'll be doing 6 damage. So now do you see how he can beat Joe Smith? So the rest of his hand is... 2 lands, Mana Leak, Vapor Snag. And here he can do it, right? He can play one of his lands. He can cast Mana Leak. I mean, he can cast Vapor Snag, target his Angel, because he can't target the, the, the Elder. And then he can cast um, Mana Leak, targeting the Vapor Snag, counter it. His, his Angel goes to 8, kills his opponent. The only thing his opponent can have right now is a Crushing Binds. But he just doesn't have it, right? He just doesn't have it. And Ben, by the way, has to attack here. He has to try and kill his opponent. Because his opponent is just going to kill him on the crackback. It's just too big. It's just too good. Um... I mean, he could take his angel to eight and then try and block, but that gives his opponent a draw step. No, you got to try and kill your opponent right now. Um, just kind of make him, you know, make it or break it, you know. And so, uh, and his opponent again. I'm just gonna go back on it again. If he would have cast that green sun, that thrag tusk, he'd be fine. He'd be up 13 right now with another attacker. He'd be he'd be so great. So I just wish he would have done that. But um, actually, no, I don't because I want the Delver player to win. And he does it. He casts vapor snag. You're gonna see it in just a second. He attacks. His opponent says, okay, I'll take six. Ben Lundquist says, no, more than six. I'm going to Vapor Snag my Angel, and I'm going to Mana Leak the Vapor Snag. And game, set, match. Pause. Let's get out of here. All right, let's close that. Okay. What a game. What a way of thinking, right? What a way of thinking. I think the most impressive thing that he did there was that he gut shot himself. 
that was that was so impressive that nobody saw it. Maybe 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 some of you saw it when you were watching the coverage. I sure didn't. And when the announcers were like, "Why is he at eight? Shouldn't he be at nine? What's going on here? Why is an opponent lower life? Because nobody saw it. Nobody understood. I mean, I didn't. I didn't see what was happening. Um, but it was brilliant. You know, that's that. But but do you see what he had to do just to use that timely there? That's why I'm not a big fan of timely. But I got to I got to step off it because it's probably really good. I probably just don't understand. So okay, let's talk about timely. Gut shot, no matter what, no secrets. Mono Green kept a slow hand. Yeah. So the big thing there is that Mono Green kept a really slow hand, and that Ben, I think Ben played around it really well. Uh, and I think his last, that last turn was was great. I think both play, both players that last turn did as much as they could. You know, I mean, that his opponent's goal when he cast that surgical wasn't to get the gut shots specifically. It was more okay. How can I get my life to the same life as his so that his timely doesn't do anything at all? Because otherwise, his timely can go up. He can just attack, be a little bit more safe, hold on to that mana leak, and 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 his opponent cracks back, and then he cracks back again for the win. I mean, he could have done other things there, um, but his opponent took himself down to and took out two cards from the graveyard, so did nothing there, nothing as far as that life total is concerned, um, and then he. To stop the timely, that was his whole purpose. There was just to stop timely. So he paid two life, discarded a card to stop a timely reinforcements. I don't like surgical. Dismember would have won in the game, but that's you know, I mean, things happen. Uh, but yeah, either way, I, I feel like I'm maybe critiquing this game too harshly because I watched it like five times now. I shouldn't critique it that hard. I should instead say that like, I don't know that I would have played. I would have played differently. I don't think I would have played better. I don't think I would have played better than Ben Lundquist. Um, I would have vapor sacked my Delver in that turn three when he crushing binds it, and that would have been a mistake. And I wouldn't have thought to gush out myself to activate to turn on my timely. I wouldn't have thought of that either. Maybe, but I don't think so. And Ben Luckwitz is a great player. He ended up losing in the semis, um, and Reed Duke looked down the whole tournament with a sweet deck. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I want to analyze that game with you guys, and I wanted you guys to give me some feedback and let me know what you thought about it, how it went. Um, if you like this kind of format, because I might start doing this uh, once a week or so, analyzing like my favorite game, my favorite match, or my favorite something from like a Star City Open or a GP. Um, yeah, I might start doing that more often. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all uh, your comments. I appreciate your questions. I appreciate all the subscriptions that we've had. Hopefully that tournament starts you know, next week sometime. And uh, peace out. Have a wonderful day. And I will see you on the flippy flop, gangsta. Peace.